technology absolutely is has like everything else in life some positives in this area and some negatives the positives are definitely the fact that technology can bring women together so for example thanks to Exxon Mobil my foundation did a a project in Nigeria which we're now doing in Mexico where we took 500 women in Nigeria and gave them access uh, women entrepreneurs to what we call a blended learning program so they came together for some classes in financial literacy and how to run a business which they could do whilst they were still running their business and at the same time they also had courses delivered by technologies which they could do outside of the classroom one of the things we did with that is we helped them set up WhatsApp groups so that they could support each other. A year after that project finished, 38% of those women are still in those WhatsApp groups. And what they found and what they said was the fact that you could talk to other women in that situation, even though you weren't physically present with those women and could share ideas, can really help make you feel you're not on your own. And in, particularly in the developing and emerging economies, often as a woman entrepreneur, Firstly, it may be the only thing you can do because you don't have access to the, the, the formal jobs, but it also means that you have a lot of barriers and to know that you're not on your own is a really important part of that. So technology in many ways can help because it can give women access to information and to each other which they don't otherwise have. But in relation to the fact that of course the technology sector is still very male dominated and as a result in some ways has sometimes some pretty teenage boy type uh, cultures which need to change, mm. clearly we need to do more than that. But we have to accept that if you look at China, for example, um, where you see that you know, engineers, you know, no one thinks an engineer looks like a man in China because engineering is very equally split between the sexes. So it is not inevitable that girls don't do maths and science. It's something to do with the way we as a culture are ex expressing what those jobs stand for. So role models are really important, which is why it's really important that we, uh, we see women on boards, we see women politicians, we see women uh, like Christine Lagarde at the top of a financial, international financial institution. So a young girl in Nigeria, a young girl in Mexico can turn around and say, that could be me one day. And in terms of access to finance, I mean, this is something that's come up. A number of CEOs have said to me directly that work in the industry that if you have a shutting down of borders, that um, the access to finance for women is an issue because criteria kicks in on lending again. And men typically get the access to the funding first up. Absolutely. And that's partly because across many countries of the world, women still don't perhaps have property rights. And often when you're looking for collateral, it's the property rights that go. Do you, do you know that 18 countries in the world today still have laws which mean that a man can say, you have to have a man's permission to work. And that's not just you probably think, oh, Saudi Arabia. It's not just Saudi Arabia, it's Bolivia, for example. Wow. I don't know why Bolivia, Cameroon, the Sudan. Um, you know, these, these legal barriers to women participating in the workforce is also, as a lawyer, something that I'm very uh, interested in, and they can be changed quite easily. Cultural change takes longer. Still watching? Perfect. Click here to watch another great video from CNBC International. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.